Dietary restriction has been known for a long time to have numerous health benefits. Um, and it was first discovered in the experimental literature over 100 years ago to extend lifespan in rodents. And what we found in this paper is that one of the mechanisms underlying the benefits of dietary restriction is actually the body's own production of a gas called hydrogen sulfide. And then one of the most beautiful things about dietary restriction, you know, giving benefits, is that it's kind of, it's, it's so universal that it goes from yeast to worms to flies to mammals. And in this paper, it really encompasses, you know, all those organisms. So for the first model um, to test dietary restriction, the benefits of dietary restriction, and the mechanisms um, driving these, these benefits, um, we use the surgical model of ischemic from perfusion injury uh, to the liver. So we had mice on normal diets where they can eat as much as they want, or we restricted their diets about 50% from what they normally had eaten one week prior to surgery. And we saw that, yes, in fact, that mice that had undergone the restricted diet did better during and after the surgery. So we knew that short-term periods of dietary restriction protect against surgical stress in rodent models. And we were interested in asking the question, what is the nutritional basis, and what's more, what is the molecular basis of protection against, against injury due to surgery? So we went back and tested if we added other antioxidants, such as vitamin C and vitamin E, if that would block the benefits, and it didn't. And then we tested if we added sulfur amino acids, methionine and cysteine, into the diet. Um, to see if that would block the benefits of dietary restriction, and it did. So it was more so the sulfur amino acid aspect of adenosylcysteine or cysteine and methionine that blocks the benefits of dietary restriction. Having elucidated the nutritional basis of protection, that is depletion of these two sulfur amino acids, cysteine and methionine, we then went on to ask, what is the molecular mechanism governing protection? What we found, quite surprisingly, is that reducing these two sulfur amino acids actually results in the body producing more of a sulfur-containing gas called hydrogen sulfide. And production of this gas then was essential for the benefits we were seeing in terms of protection from surgical stress. So in order to provide direct evidence that hydrogen sulfide was actually responsible for some of the benefits we saw by dietary restriction, what we did is first we used an animal where the gene, one of the genes in the liver that produces hydrogen sulfide was deleted. And in fact, those animals lost protection by dietary restriction. The other approach we took was to overexpress that gene, specifically in the liver. And what we found in that case is when those animals were subject to ischemia reperfusion injury, they did much better even without a dietary intervention. So having shown that hydrogen sulfide played a role in the benefits of dietary restriction against acute surgical stress, we were then interested in asking the bigger question. Does hydrogen sulfide play a role in the longevity benefits of dietary restriction? What we found is that in lower organisms, where dietary restriction also increases lifespan, that hydrogen sulfide was produced. Now this was true in flies, in worms, and in yeast. And interestingly, specifically in worms, in collaboration with Will Mayer here at the School of Public Health, we found that a similar gene, which is involved in hydrogen sulfide production in worms, was required for the benefits of dietary restriction. So it seems then that there's an evolutionarily conserved role for increased hydrogen sulfide production upon multiple dietary restriction regimens. And these could then play a role, um, not only in longevity extension and acute stress resistance, but potentially other benefits of dietary restriction as well. So in the future, you know, you could possibly modulate diets to, you know, to limit methionine or limit you know, cysteine or sulfur amino acids while you can, you know, probably eat as much as you want, but if you're just lacking those amino acids, you might, you might be fine. You might get the benefits of a, of a full, full-blown diet. So ongoing research is, is aimed at proving whether this mechanism is active in humans as well. And furthermore, if we can manipulate this pathway, it's conserved from yeast all the way up through mammals. And so I think it's very likely that we'll, we'll see similar effects in humans.